Hello, adventurer. Now that we've prepared the data, let's bring it to life. In this video, we'll train our LoRa using AI Toolkit and then build automated content generation workflows using prompt generators and LLMs. From this point on, it's all about expanding your ideas with ease and efficiency. To follow along with this quest, you'll need access to my Patreon exclusive workflows crafted, tested, and bundled with one-click setups for smooth spellcasting. If you seek to master this magic yourself, hop over to my Patreon and unlock the arcane tools. Now, we're ready to train our LoRa using AI Toolkit. This is a RunPod template we can deploy directly. No tricky installations needed. Let's search for AI Toolkit here, find the official Docker image, and click Deploy to get started. I'm choosing the Community Cloud here, since we won't be downloading many files. And this is just a one-time use. For speed, select the Extreme option and pick NVMe Storage because it's faster. Also, make sure to use CUDA version 12.8 or above. That's important because anything lower won't start properly. Next, pick your 4090 GPUs, add the AI Toolkit template, and you'll see an environment variable password. We'll use this value as the password to log into the UI you'll encounter. So go ahead, choose a password you like, and deploy the environment. Our pod is up and running. To connect, click the connect button and choose this option. When prompted, enter the password you set earlier in the environment variables. Don't confuse this with your hugging face token. Once you do, the connection will start and we're ready to go. We need to set up our hugging face token. Click on the settings, paste your token into the hugging face token field and hit her save settings. Next, let's create a new data set. Click a new data set. Give it a name, then click Add Images. Select all your prepared images and drag them in. The upload shouldn't take long depending on your connection speed. And just like that, we'll have our images along with their captions ready to go. Now, we can create a new job. So let's create a new training job. There are just a few key parameters we need to focus on. You don't have to understand everything to successfully train your first low ray. We'll walk through the important ones together. Start by giving your low ra a training name, and then set your trigger word, the special token that will activate your low ra during generation. Next, change the model architecture to Flux One instead of the original Flux Dev repository. We're going to use the Flux Dev2 Pro model. This version tends to yield better results for Flux Low raw training. If you're curious about the details, I've linked an article in the description that explains why. Now, paste the Hugging Face repository path right here. This tells the toolkit which model checkpoint to use for training. We'll leave these parameters at their default values for now. They're well suited for our first training run. In most cases, you'll start to see good results around 2,000 to 3,000 training steps. Beyond that, if you train for too long, the model can start to overfit, meaning it gets too focused on the training data and loses its ability to generalize or generate diverse outputs. Since we've already resized our images to 1024, we'll just use a single resolution chunk 1024 bar and disable the others. That'll keep our training focused and efficient. Now let's write our sample prompts. These will be used during training to generate validation images so we can track how well the model is learning. I've added my prompts here. You'll want to include at least four solid examples. 
Think of these as examples of what you want to get out of your LoRa model, so make them detailed and a bit challenging to really test its capabilities. And don't forget to include your trigger word here. Alright, go ahead and click a create job to set everything up. Then make sure to hit the starter button to begin training. This process can take a couple of hours, so feel free to step away while it runs in the background. While it's training, you can monitor the progress by checking the logs and reviewing the sample images. These give a good sense of how well your low rise learning over time. Our training took about three hours, and now we have our checkpoint files ready. Let's download them and take a look at the samples. The first row shows baseline results. These are the images before any training. As training progresses, you'll see our character gradually begins to match our dataset images much more closely. If you want to explore further, you can edit your training job and increase the steps, say, up to 4,000. When you run it again, it will continue from where it left off. Just watch out for overfitting. I extended my training from 3,000 steps to test for improvements and saw some slight gains. So I'm going to test those checkpoints as well. Now that we have our LoRa checkpoint files, let's upload them to our Hugging Face account. Head over to Hugging Face, click on your profile picture, and select a new model. Give your repository a name, set it to private, and click the Create Model. <sighs> if you have Pip and the Hugging Face try installed on your system, you can use the Upload command. But alternatively, you can simply drag and drop your checkpoint files right here on the model page. Once uploaded, click your commit changes to main to finalize. Let's go ahead and upload our files. Let's place our LoRa files inside the model's LoRa folder. While you can drag and drop your LoRa file here, Keep in mind that this method can take much longer than downloading it from the hugging face. That's why I've prepared a script to handle the download for us. You'll get access to that script too. Just run it and it'll fetch your models quickly and place them in the right folder. The script uses your hugging face token and Civit AI API key, both of which you set during your Docker template initialization. You can easily edit the script to download any file you want from Hugging Face or Civit AI. The first argument in the script is your download URL. You can get this by right-clicking the model's download button and copying the link. Paste it into the script. The second argument is the file path where the model will be saved. We are currently saving it under the model's LoRa folder. You can also edit this script to download other model types, like diffusion models or text encoders, by adjusting the path accordingly. Let's go ahead and run the script. Just type bash download models, start downloading the models one by one. This method is much faster than uploading manually. Now we're ready to test our uploaded LoRa models. Let's pick one of them from the list. You'll also notice we have plenty of other LoRa's available for achieving both realistic and artistic effects. So feel free to experiment them as needed and please check the notes. We're using the ultra real fine tuned model here because it produces consistent, realistic results and plays well with our LoRa's. We're skipping Flux Mania for now. It often gives noisy or distorted faces with our setup. That's because LoRa's are trained on Flux Dev and learn how to tweak its specific weights. If a fine-tuned model, like Flux Mania, has diverged too much from Flux Dev, 
those tweaks may no longer apply correctly. You might still get a few good shots with Flux Mania. But for more reliable results, we'll stick with Flux Dev and Ultra Real. It's a bit of a cherry-picking process. Not all your results will be perfect. Let's start with something simple. We'll go with a basic portrait prompt using manual input. We'll run it a few times and see what kind of results we're getting. Looks like our Laura is working well so far. Now, let's activate the Prompt Text Generator in the Prompt Enhancer. As we've covered earlier, you can select specific features for your character, or add your own custom details if you have something in mind. Now, in addition to enabling the generator, we're also going to give some instructions to our LLM to help guide the randomness. For example, I'm asking it to pick a setting, like what kind of environment the character might be in. This way, you don't have to manually think about background or scene details. It's all handled automatically. The generated prompt will appear. We're replacing any words that refer to the character with our Laura's trigger word. On top of that, we're appending additional trigger words as needed. You can add any other Laura trigger words you want to use. I've also prepared some notes to help you understand how to apply each lore effectively. Before adding any more Lauras, let's take a look at the current results with a few test runs. Now, let's bring in the Grainscape Laura to add more stylized effects. I'll place it here and enable it from this node. Make sure not to set your LoRa strength too high. Going too strong can distort the image. Even around 70% is already quite powerful and can give you a dramatic movie-like effect. For more subtle results, it's better to start with a lower strength. Ah, splendid! Let us behold the results. These are turning out quite marvelous indeed. Now, we'll switch over to the regular Flux Dev model. On its own, it might give you some typical Flux issues like plastic-looking faces or blurry backgrounds, so I don't recommend using it by itself. But when paired with a realism Laura, like the ultra-realistic one, we get much better results. Since we trained our Laura on Flux Dev, sticking with the base model helps ensure more consistent generations. Let's add the ultra-realistic Laura now to push the realism further. These are its trigger words. Using one of them will help the model choose a lighting style. Let's cast the spell and see what it gives us. And these results look fantastic. Another cool thing we can do is give our LLM model some instructions. Like saying our character lives in London and wears gothic outfits. Let's start the magic and see what happens. With this tool in your hands, endless creative possibilities await. And with that, your grimoire is complete. You've learned how to build, train, refine, and automate your creative workflows. What you generate from here is limited only by your imagination.